o'clock and we have a quorum as Chloe just stated, so um, we can call this meeting to order. Uh, Chloe, can you um, go through the roll call? Yeah, Bowen. Breyer. Here. Donahue. Here. Elliot. Here. Ferrer. Myers. Nowacki. Here. And Gilly. Here. And Rager. Here. Right, you look so serious. Now again, it's like a little less serious. Sorry, <laughs> uh, all right. Thanks, Chloe. Um, all right, on the agenda today, we have um, some new business, so we can start with um, approving the minutes for the meeting of April 13th. Has everybody had a chance to review the minutes? Um, great. I was um, I was not at the last meeting. Um, does anybody have any changes to make to the minutes or corrections? Hearing none. Uh, is, um, is somebody, I was not at the meeting. As I mentioned, is there would somebody like to uh, make a motion to approve the minutes? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Thank you very much. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? I'm going to abstain from that. From that vote. Catherine's going to abstain too. Um, okay, the motion passes. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, moving on to the second of the new business agenda items um, improvement project updates from Lisa Duplee. Did I pronounce that correctly? Duplessy. Duplessy. <laughs> Shoot. You're good. It's okay. Okay, thank you very much. All right, I'll turn it over to you. Okay, so and members, thank you so much. Um, Doug Holloway apologizes for not being here. Chloe mentioned it earlier, but just so everybody knows, um, we've had um, the director of arts and history step away um, after a few months, and he has stepped into the role just as interim uh, director over there to kind of keep them on track and moving forward. So he's doing double duty and had another commission meeting for arts and history tonight. He apologizes for not being here. Um, so I'm thrown in the deep end, just right off the bat. No sir, no doubt. So um, I just want to go over a couple updates of the projects that you guys have already approved and let you know where we're at with those. So the um, BSU carbon sequestration uh, project that you approved, I think in January is when it went through. Um, Dr. DeGraff, they've had a little bit of a stall, so they're not going to start work until the spring. Um, we originally, I think, were hoping for fall. Martha and I are both working on the agreement just to figure out how all the details are going to work of deliverables and payouts and things like that. So that's where we're at with that project. Um, Hawkins Trailhead and Trail Loop. We are finally, um, after lots of weather, <laughs> um, Doug with Cutty Mountain is up there starting to do the trail. Um, we have our trail crew up there working on the first two miles of the trail um, from the original contractor. It didn't winter very well, so they're up there kind of fixing the first two miles. Doug has done another mile past that. Um, we are then hopefully within two weeks, um, our crew will start working on the nested loop inside. So that smaller kind of loop that will go. Yeah, yeah, so it'll make it just a shorter loop, so not the full 5.7. <clears throat> um, one thing we have noticed already is um, we have contacted Fish and Heat again. There are still cows calving up there this late. They're actually one of our trail guys um, saw a cow be, or a calf be born it just below the trail this morning. So. Um, so we're talking about maybe extending not just a winter closure. Um, we may not close it longer, but at least work on some additional signing because it's definitely um, still a dog hazard and different things like that. So try and figure out what we'll do. Um, I think that's all I have kind of on, yeah. So when it was brought before the city council about the cost yeah. for the, the improvements, was there any pushback or do they, they're so used to everything costs you a fortune now? Then. Yeah, can you remember, remember prior? There is, I think they are used to things being almost double. Yeah, so there was not a lot of pushback at all. Um, we are still working on the donation. I think that Sarah mentioned the last time in her presentation last month um, to see if we can get that additional $100,000 to take our contribution of levy funds from 820 down to 720. 
Um, but there really wasn't any pushback. I think people are very excited about this trailhead coming. Um, it's using a property that we've acquired, but everything is more expensive right now, unfortunately. <laughs> Can we move back to the cows for a minute? Yes. <laughs> so we're going to allow grazing on it, or? No, and I'm sorry, elk cows oh, are oh, out there. Oh, oh, oh. That's what I I'm sorry. I was so sorry. I'm so sorry. Elk cows. I should have clarified. Elk cows are out there. Yes, no grazing. <laughs> yeah, okay. So. Either that or we should be getting paid. Yeah. <laughs> so, no grazing, just elk. Yeah, which is a great day of work cool. for Bart to be able to see that this morning. Yeah, that makes a little more sense. <laughs> <laughs> so good. I should have clarified. I know David sent an email this morning and just said, yeah, cow and calf. Yeah, okay. I relay it without the details. <laughs> so that's all we have for improvement project details. Okay. Well, that sounds great. Thank you very much. Uh, we can turn it back over to you for the committee updates. Committee updates. I know, and I'm not. This, these are just two things I thought would be good for us to go over. Um, two applications that are probably going to be coming down the pipe in the next two months. So, um, one I know that Sarah has already talked to you about, which is the Hubbard uh, Reservoir Project Improvements. So, uh, she and Martha had been working with Ada County on doing some improvement projects out in Hubbard Reservoir, which is kind of South Boise, close to Cuna. <clears throat> they are interested in doing some benches, some trail improvements, um, a new entrance. There just needs a lot of improvement to increase access, recreation access out there. Now, I've been out there and been all around the whole thing. Yeah. It's it's in the city of Cuna. Yes. None of them have paid a dime towards the levy. Yes. Uh, I have feel and the, the reservoir does not serve a purpose anymore since they built yep. Lucky Peak and, and uh Anderson Ranch. I mean that eliminated the purpose for the entire reservoir. So I just don't see how we could justify and you can see the house is moving right there from the city of Cuna. Um Ada County's got plenty of money. They just did a tax rebate to all their to all those taxpayers. Yep. And so committee, committee member Cryer, this is one that I that was actually my first question when this project, they have been working on it for a while. Um, I think the idea is that lots of city of Boise residents would benefit from out there. Again, yeah, just a, and so this is one I know had been in the works for months. I think Sarah presented it last fall. She talked about it. Yeah. So, and this is definitely, I think they can turn in the application, go through the process, and these are absolutely conversations that we can have and decide um, when the time comes for that. Um, I'm, you know, not, and I will actually take that back and find out some more of those details of why it was kind of originally brought forward and what was, what the intent was with it. Because like I said, that was my first question too. Yeah, so. and, and the dam's been condemned, so. Yeah. I will definitely bring that up and come back next month with more information. On yeah, that. that'd be great because it. Um, I wonder if it's anything like the um, the wildlife underpass mm -hmm. um, on Highway 21, where obviously that's outside the city limits, but it it's used benefit. it's used heavily by Boise residents. And so if if this hover you know reservoir is is used heavily by um, Boise residents, mm -hmm. it, it might it might be you know. Could be reasonable, and I think that that's something that they'll have to show in their application. Yeah, yeah. So, because the main use of it that I found out, because I've did a bunch of research on this, is that it's used for bird dogs. It's a bird dog training area, oh, and when I was out there, we were out there on Thanksgiving Day, and I saw six different groups of people bird dog. Wow. And that's what it's used for. That's the main use for it, okay. and they have all these groups that come out there to, to train the bird dogs. Okay. It's known for it. I mean, it's almost famous for it because it's got that big alluvial plains with the brush and the dogs you know, uh, get the pheasant to come up and stuff so and those are great points which <clears throat> i will definitely bring up to scott Cobert, who's the head of ada county that i know is working with martha on this application um and i apologize for my it's not covid taking the test it's just no, allergies, allergies off the charts um 
So if we're ready, if we're good on that one, and I will find out the answers to those questions. Um, the other one that we <clears throat> have been working on and are hoping to bring in August is we've been working with Sierra, who is the accessibility manager for the city of Boise. Um, it was brought to our attention, and I think months ago, I know David Borden with our team has talked to her multiple times about just making trails more accessible, um, how many miles of accessible trail we have, and there was a big uh, discussion. She has a committee as well that she works with to try and identify different projects and, and ways to make the city more accessible. And one of the things that was brought up was having a more accessible trail activity close into downtown where there's parking, where there is, um, sorry, public transit to get people there. And so they, we, David and I had met with them <clears throat> multiple times trying to identify some different projects and areas that might work well. And what we've kind of landed on is um, an additional Grove loop. So down in Hulls Gulch, where you have um, the Grove Trail and Owl's Roost, making an additional loop so that people could do a continuous loop instead of having to make it up to foothill if they didn't want to. So they could, but it would extend kind of an accessible trail down there. As we started looking into that, um, we started noticing that one of the biggest barriers was the sand that's sloughing off back there behind Camel's Back. We've had multiple meetings talking about sand, um, lots of sand. Don't want to do anything with the sand. The kids love it. It's a great amenity for them to play in. Um, we, David's team for years has just pushed the sand down the trail with the skids here. Um, that continues to create problems for people with mobility issues um, and things like that. So we actually met with a public works engineer on site and talked about rerouting the trail and really separating the two areas. So having the trail that comes, it's actually the beginning of Red Fox coming behind Camel's Back that would actually separate from the sand. So as the sand comes down, there would be a division and the trail would go even just 15 feet off, 20 feet off to eliminate some of that sand issue and really have a safer play area, to be honest, where yeah. bikes aren't pummeling through there, even with the chicane there. And being able to just, they would still, bikers would still have to navigate that um, chicane, but yeah, it does, but they still get going through there. So just kind of separating the areas. So I just wanted to let you know that's another thing we've kind of been working on. David and Sierra are going to work on an application to get ready to present to you, um, but are interested in maybe funding them. So that's another project that's coming. I just wanted you guys to be aware of. Um, any questions on that one? No, I'm glad there's some. I'm glad there's good accessibility work going on. Yeah. I was a concern of Jeremy's. I know. Yeah. And he sits on the committee with Sierra and has been yeah, out on the trail with us and really kind of, um, there. I think there's six people that have really been helping us push forward with some accessibility issues. Um, is it superintendent or administrator? Superintendent. Superintendent. Um, I'm not good at that either. The project we're doing out there on Highway 21 by where the Crow yes. used to be, that has a lot of, of uh, accessibility, correct? The paths? Oh, committee member Cryer, are you talking about up with um, the Harris Ranch? Like no, this is down below on the river where it was with the. Oh. Oh, uh, where everybody used to the move. IBO yeah. area that's down gotcha. there. Yes, that will have a lot of accessible, and that I believe is hooked. And correct me if I'm wrong, but with the new park that will be out there. Okay. Yeah. I knew there was a reason they they stopped on it for a while. So. Yeah, and I'm not super familiar with that one. I was telling Stacy too before we got here, but I have skills, just new language, trying to make it all work <laughs> together. So. Um, yes, but I know there will be accessible trails down there as well. I, I believe right now we are at about 10 full miles of accessible trails, which compared to the 200 that we have, but it, you know, it's, it's hard as things get steep and, um, there is a whole nother criteria for trails being accessible, um, that is federally mandated. So David works pretty hard with that as well. Yeah. Is the, um, is the chicane a barrier to accessibility? So it's actually 
people are able to navigate it. Okay. We went through with the whole committee to see how that worked. And so that's why we decided even when we reroute it to still have that be part of the trail, but it was, um, they were still able to navigate. Yeah, it wasn't a barrier. Okay. The sand was the biggest issue. Yeah, okay. um, and that was really hard. And just having a shaded, you know, and accessible in all the words, right? So public transportation, being able to get there. We looked at some spots out in military reserve um, that were just a little bit too hot, um, not really accessible parking or bus availability. So, and I think a lot of the idea too was to have something that um, everyone could go on with their friends, you know, that's right in the heart of the town. Um, yes, there are some accessible trails, even out in, um, like the Oregon Trail area, different places that we had identified, but being in the heart of town, I think was important as well. So it's been a fun project to work on. And uh, yeah, it's it, it opens your eyes to a lot of different things for sure. So. That's great, we'll look forward to seeing that application. Yeah, that's all I've got. All right. Um, so the next item is um, executive session. Do you have um, items to discuss in there? Yeah. Okay, that sounds great. Um, does somebody somebody volunteer to read the language, or I'm happy to do it as well? Hearing hearing no really super <laughs> eager volunteers, I will read it. Uh, pursuant to Idaho Code Section 74206, subsection one, subsection C to acquire an interest in real property, which is not owned by a public agency and Idaho code section 74-206 subsection one subsection F to communicate with legal counsel for the public for the public agency to discuss the legal ramifications of and legal options for pending litigation or controversies not yet being litigated, but imminently likely to be litigated. Close a second. Oh, is there a second? Um, Roll call, Bowen? Cryer? Here. Donahue? Yes. Elliot? Yes. Berger? Myers? Nowacki? Yes. And Gilly? Yes. And Raber? Yes. Motion to come out. Is there a motion to exit executive session? I will make a motion to exit. Is there a second? I'll second. Quick roll call, Bowen? Cryer? Here. Donahue? Yes. Elliot? Yes. Burr? Myers? Nowacki? Yes. And Gilly? Yes. And Raver? Yes. Adjourn? <laughs> <laughs> All right. And uh, is there a motion to adjourn the meeting? I would make a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Sure. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> All right, this meeting's adjourned. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.